Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, Call Halal, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, I'd like to say, Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. The Akim is pushing his word and all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the, for the few sincere sisters who watch and believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to the new fruit, the new viewership, the new believers coming into this faith. Just back with another lesson, I was meditating. Uh, sometimes we get lost in our own mind and worrying about things that are way beyond our grasp and way beyond, beyond our comprehension level. You know, I've heard the saying a lot of times, and I know in my own personal life I'm trying to master it. Uh, basically, control the controllables. So, meaning to hell with anything that's beyond your control. And that's where, you know, prayer and, and faith kicks in, you know. And ultimately, man, you know, we can extrapolate within certain things that's in the scripture and otherwise. But if it's things with, with outside of your realm of control, man, you know, you just got to leave that, you know, to the, to, the, to, the, to the most high, you know. Like, that's why the scripture says uh, when you read, matter of fact, I'll, I'll actually start off with this scripture in uh, Isaiah because I don't want to misquote it and bear with me for if it's background noise and stuff because I'm just doing a little nature walk um, <clears throat> I know it's in Isaiah bear with me Akim yup this is Isaiah 55 and 8 it says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways said the Lord so especially when it comes to uh, things as far as what the Most High said in His will, you know, because sometimes it gets frustrating having to be patient and suffer and endure these different adversities and trials, you know, like we feel like Habakkuk at sometimes, how long, O oh Lord, will you allow the wicked to basically just rule and it feels like there's a lack of judgment, you know, going throughout the earth, but we know that the Most High, He's a man that He should not lie, and He already set up promises that we know he's going to keep, man. And the scripture tells you in Romans 15, the things which are written aforetime were written for our learning. So there's countless examples of our forefathers having to suffer patiently and endure hardship and trials for a, a better outcome. So, you know, as prophecy, you know, that, like the scripture says, measure the time, but you can't get too caught up. Are oh, the Lord going to come this year, the next year or the third? Now, we hasten the, the day that the Lord, you know, comes back to, 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 to deliver us. And when I'm talking about the Lord, I'm talking about the, the son of the heavenly father, Yahweh. That's the heavenly father. And his only begotten son's name is Yahweh Shah, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ. So we hope it comes sooner than later. But you can't get uh, too caught up in your own thoughts about when certain prophecies going to take the place, man. Because the, the most high is controlling the show, man. We just have to fit within the bounds that he already established. But I'm going to read this again. This is Isaiah 55 and 8. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So that's clear to the cut, man. The most highest thoughts are higher than our thoughts, man. This thing that we know of, this concept of time, the most high is outside of the bounds of time, man. And I know that time is relative to a plane of existence, but we're talking about a power who created that concept for us to have a, 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 a thought of what time is, man. So we can't try to conceive what's in the heavens, you know, how things are playing out as far as prophecy, how it's going to manifest and what we know of as the earth at this time, man. We just have to play our role to the best of our ability, man. And just have faith and trust that the Heavenly Father is going to grant us an expected end, like it says when you read in Jeremiah the 29th chapter. And ultimately, like I said, the Most High, He keeps His promises, man. We got an example of our forefather Noah. He was out preaching and prophesying a rain during the time when he was on the earth. For over 120 years before it actually rained on the earth, man. So I'm sure Noah had his moments of doubt, you know, anger, you know, 
when he had to suffer patiently all of the, the ridicule, the scorn, the scoffing, mocking, you know, during the time that he was out there prophesying. But eventually it, it did flood. That prophecy did come to pass. I'm going to read this. Matter of fact, I'm going to jump down to verse 11. Isaiah 55 and 11, it says, so, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So the word of the Heavenly Father, it doesn't return void. Like we always say, you know, Babylon the Great, which we know as America, in the spiritual realm, it's already destroyed, man. Everything just has to manifest in the flesh. And we, you know, in our capacity, we just have to uh, do service to the best of our ability in the, in the world that we've been given, man, you know, and let the Most High just do him, man. That's why the Most High's name, Yahweh, it means he is, he exists, he is to be, you know, <laughs> he's, he, he's, you know, in all and through all. I think that term is ubiquitous, you know, he's omnipotent and uh, omniscient, you know, all knowing, all powerful. So we got to let the Most High do him, man. We can't, can't try to, uh, you know, beat ourselves up guessing and thinking why the Most High do this, why the Most High didn't do that. Even when you're going through certain trials, man, you may not feel that you deserve for certain things that may happen in your life, man. You know, you might feel like, man, Lord, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm serving to the best of my ability. I'm doing this, that, and the third. Like, why am I having to go through this? And we all get those thoughts at times, but you got to trust that the Lord has a greater plan then even you can conceive, you know, at whatever particular time you're going through what you're going through, man. Because we can't try to get into the mind of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Now, we can try to get, you know, a, a, a so-called view of the mind of the Heavenly Father and His Son through the Scriptures, man. You know, we get an inkling of, of their will uh, for us here on earth. But we can't try to, you know grasp the entire mindset of the heavenly father man the ancient of days man this is um ecclesiastes 11 and 5 it says as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child even so thou knowest not the works of the most high who maketh all so you don't know like that process, the the the, the whole uh, science of that process, how you know a, a baby is 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 born and it grows in his mother's womb, man. You know, to a lot of uh, people, even you know doctors and people who are into science, that that's a so-called miracle. You know, when a baby is born, you know, when a woman conceives a child. So just the the inner workers of that process, you can't even really conceptualize it fully, man. You know. But I'm going to read it in the NLT version. This is Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 11, verse 5 in the NLT version. It says, just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of the Most High who does all things. So you can't understand the activity of the Most High who does all things, man. So... Don't beat yourself up trying to uh, come into the thoughts and, and the will of the Most High, man. The Most High, he he he, he going to do what he's going to do regardless, man. That's why I like when it says in Romans 3, For what if some shall not believe? Shall that make the faith of the Most High without effect? The Most High forbid. Let God be true and every man a liar. I'm loosely paraphrasing Romans 3 and 3. But just going back... Um, you should only try to master the things that are within your control, man, you know, which the biggest enemy to our spiritual journey and serving the Heavenly Father is always that person that you look at when you look in the mirror, man, is you. So that's our greatest challenge is basically having a rule over ourselves, man, rule over this flesh. So that's what brothers, especially newer brothers, should try to focus on, man. You know, that's the that's the uh, the beginnings of applying discipline which the scriptures talk about uh the desire of 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 discipline or wisdom is the desire of discipline which leads to a kingdom 
when you're reading uh, Wisdom of Solomon in the sixth chapter. I'm loosely paraphrasing. So focus on the things that's within your grasp. That's the, the whole point I'm going into into the lesson. You know, even if it sounds like I'm kind of rambling. I'm going to go into a scripture in the Apocrypha. Which the Apocrypha, it is a part of the original 1611 King James Version Bible. But I'm going to go to Wisdom of Solomon, the ninth chapter. Just to further expound on some of the thoughts that I'm making here. Um... This is Wisdom of Solomon 9, and uh, I'll start at 13. It says, For what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High? And it says God verbatim, but we know that the word God, it just means power. That's not the name of the Heavenly Father or His Son. You know? It says, I'll read it again, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 13, it says, for what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High? Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? So what man, what mortal man on the earth that can't even control a bowel movement? You can't even control when you got to go to the bathroom all of a sudden, man. But you're going to try to uh, comprehend the thoughts and the will of the Heavenly Father? <laughs> like we say, man, today, you know, stay in your lane. You got to stay in your lane, man. It says, verse 14, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and our devices are but uncertain, you know, because we make plans every day, you know, and, and, and the joke is uh, you want to make the most high laugh and tell them your plans because there's just certain things that are within that are outside of the realm of, of our control. It says. Verse 15, for the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the hearty and the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that muses upon many things. Because ultimately we know that our spirit, that's pure energy, man. The spirit never dies, you know. And our spirit is trapped in these mortal bodies, man, that basically weighs our spirit down. Because ultimately our spirit is really uh, crying to, 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 to go back to the Heavenly Father, man. The scriptures talk about, I think the Apostle Paul, in his one of his epistles, he says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm loosely paraphrasing that, man, because your spirit yearns to be outside of these mortal bodies, man, because the spirit is infinite, man. But continuing on, it says, this is a... Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 16. And here's the point I want to get in this chapter. It says, And hardly do we guess a right. And hardly do we guess a right at things that are upon earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven, who has searched out? So the things within the earth, man, that are even within our grasp sometimes, sometimes we guessing, man. Sometimes we don't always know the correct answer or the, or the way to go, man. We don't know the 100% correct signs behind certain things, man. So how much more so uh, will it be difficult to search out the things in the heavens, man? To, to try to search out the, the minds and the thoughts of the Heavenly Father and why he do this and why he do, who do that, you know? Why it seems like people that are righteous, you know, have to suffer. And go through adversity while people that are wicked, they continue to prosper and, and live longer days, man. It's going to come to a point we're going to figure it out eventually, you know. But at this appointed time right now in these mortal bodies, man, we just need to focus on the things that are within our grasp. So, I just want to just share a few points. I know it's a short lesson, but I was just walking, doing a nature walk, and I just want to just strike while the iron is hot so to speak so lord willing this edified i want to give all praises to yahweh by shim yahweh shah by shim double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone shalom one peace and blessings to the elect